Hello everybody. So today I want to show you an updated version of my AFK Witch Farm. So this is definitely one of the easiest designs to build, but also one of the most efficient ones. So it works like this. Like always we have three spawning platforms and every about 25 seconds we push all the floors up and then the witches would glitch through like this. The farm is so efficient because since 1.9 witches could spawn inside of other witches. So a newly spawned witch would no longer block the spawning space for other witches to spawn. And that's why we wait as long as possible until we raise the shifting floors. Um, but we still have to raise them within about uh, 25 seconds. Because after 30 seconds witches have a chance to despawn. Uh, and within those 25 seconds the chance for the mob cap to be filled just with a single witch farm yeah, is really insignificant. The only loss of efficiency comes from raising the spawning floors. While those are raised, no new witch could spawn in the one high gap. And since we only raised them for a little less than half a second every 25 seconds, the efficiency is a little bit above 98%. There are 100% efficient uh, witch farms, for example, by Knembon, or at example, so they use, um, for example, skeletons that always shoot at iron golems to shoot the witches off the platform, or at example's design uses the giant hitbox of gas to push the witches out, but those designs yeah, usually require a little bit more effort to build. So as you can see here, this is really simple to build. Nevertheless, I'm gonna do a tutorial. So I remarked out the lowest spawning platform of the witch farm, this is a 7x9. If you are not sure which uh, spawning spaces a witch hut provides, uh, check the Minecraft wiki. So first we start um, with the slime block pattern. So we always alternate slime blocks and then um, normal blocks. Like this. And then we go out by one more on each side here. And we'll add sticky piston at the bottom here. And now we go around to the other side again. In the middle we put a row of normal blocks. And then we just change up the pattern. So three more normal blocks here. And then slime blocks. Like this. And here we have normal blocks. Okay, now we're gonna add a row of normal blocks on the side, like this. And we just put rest on the top. Now we'll continue with the second layer. So this is basically the same. We just alternate uh, in a different way. So wherever we had a slime block, we're gonna add a normal block now and vice versa. But in the middle, we still have the normal blocks. The third layer is just a copy of the first layer, or clone. Okay, now we can start connecting the layers. So here we take two observers, like this, then we have them facing down, like this. And just gonna quickly reset that. And do the same here. and also on the other side. Now we also do this on this end. Mobs could spawn on top of those observer blocks, that's why I need to put down slabs on them. And now two or three blocks above the highest layer, I'm gonna place um, 
another roof of solid blocks. Um, we need solid blocks as a roof here because it prevents spider spawning. So if we shift this uh, floor up by one, then spiders could spawn here. And if you would have slabs above, then uh, spider spawning isn't prevented, but solid blocks do. And in order to make the solid block spawn proof, we're just gonna put slabs on top. Mobs could also spawn on top of those slime blocks here at the end. So here we have two options. Either we put down obsidian, this would prevent all mobs spawning, or we use leaves because they're maybe cheaper and if you ever want to remove the farm, it doesn't take as long. But then we still have the issue of the spider spawning because spider spawning isn't prevented. But if you put down a leaf block right here, then spider spawning is prevented. So I would suggest do it with leaves. So each side just some leaf blocks, also here, extra hoppers, and here in between. Okay, and do this also for the other two layers. Now we could continue with the rest of the redstone wiring. So on this side here, we just connect both ends. Then let's just punch out this one for a while. And here we put down an observer block again. And then in front we have a repeater on three ticks. And here we have a monostable, so a sticky piston with a block on top. We also need to make it spawn proof, that's why we put down uh, a slab here and also one next to it to prevent spider spawning. And here we add another repeater. Now we can also add this redstone dust again. And now we need a clock. Um, I usually prefer those uh, comparator clocks over the hopper clocks if it's just a 20 second delay. Of course you could use a hopper clock, but I would recommend to use comparators but because hopper duping isn't fixed. And since the timing is very important for this farm, I would go with the safe version. So we just need um, another comparator right here. Then here we have repeaters on maximum delay. Here we have another block and a redstone dust. And now we have 16 hoppers in total. So eight going in that direction and eight going in that direction. And here we just connected with redstone dust. Also make those blocks spawn proof here. And here we had a lever. Of course, you could build this clock also uh, somewhere else and just transfer the signal upwards. Of course, we have to set the comparator to subtract mode. So there's still one issue that the witches could shove each other to the side and get pushed over the blocks here. So that's why we need to prevent that. Um, so we just place down some leaf blocks here, leaf blocks, because um, slime blocks can't pull them. And here the next ones, but uh, while the uh, floors are pushed up, they still could glitch out here. That's why we need additional blocks right here. So we always need two leaf blocks and there's just no chance they could glitch in here now. Also blocks here. And on top. Let's do this on the other side. Okay, we also need to put a roof on top of it. So on each end we could go out by 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, also here. And then we can connect the ends like this. Okay. And then do this on each side and fill up the blocks in between. So look like this approximately. 
then or yeah, just fill it up. And this is the minimum size of the roof. If you make it a little bigger, it's no problem at all. And yeah, then we also need to kill the mobs. So that you have different options. If you do a normal uh, drop shoot, then you need um, 31 blocks between the ground where they are killed by the impact and the yeah, last spawning floor. But there are also other methods um, how you could kill them. You could send them to the nether and so on. So it's um, up to you. But uh, uh, the simplest is just to kill them with full damage. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.